Hello and welcome back to the ROI Club and the ROI channel, Maverick Life, wherever you may be watching this and by the time the video is released. Today, I'm going to do a stock analysis, a brief overview of an interesting company in the tanker space, Suscos Energy. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get straight into it. Disclaimer, of course, nothing I say is advice. This is just one crazy guy sharing what he thinks with the world. Don't listen to me. Do your own due diligence. If you're interested in copying the portfolio, link is available where you can uh, download eToro uh, as an app. You can add your own funds and then copy the portfolio that I manage. And if you are watching on YouTube, please do like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out and it costs you nothing. Okay. So the Maverick Life is a project that I have started where I take a middle-class amount of savings and by geo-arbitraging and investing it, turn it into a, an upper-class income stream, okay? So you can learn more about that uh, by subscribing to the Maverick Life. There is a free option uh, where you can get some of the content for free. So Saskos, uh, it's a Greek shipping company. <laughs> I have not had uh, great experiences with them in the past, generally speaking, and I'll explain why. However, shipping is becoming an obsession for me at the moment because of the geopolitical disruptions. And I, I really think that it is an impressive opportunity, probably the probably the most outstanding opportunity coming into 2024 to make outsized returns very quickly. So I have to at least take a look. So here's the company. What do I want to point out here? Okay, so I want to point out the enterprise value is three times the market cap. So it's got a bit of debt on the books. In a rising market, that gives you talk. Okay, so that's interesting to note. It's trading absurdly cheaply on a lot of levels. Price to book value, 0.4. Okay, so less than half than its accounting estimation of replacement cost. Price to earnings, three times. Market cash to free cash, three times. EV to EBITDA, four times. So very, very cheap multiple. The thesis. Shipping is a major focus for me in 2024 for reasons that I've explained in the past and that you can learn um, just by basic Google search or Twitter search. However, basics are the supply constraints remain. There's disruption in global maritime um, trade routes via the Houthi rebels, Middle East conflict, you name it. All of this adds up to longer time charter equivalents and higher day rates. So in other words, higher amounts for which the shipping companies can charge their services or lease out their vessels. Saskos is the smallest, uh, very large crude carrier trading at a very big discount to its net asset value and an estimated 30% free cash flow yield for next month, uh, for the next 12 months. That's extremely cheap. The thesis might be, if in a raging bull market for shipping, can this thing revert to purely one times its net asset value? If it did that, you'd be looking at a double. And I said, if <laughs> here are the, the freight rates for the dirty tankers, that's what this company is involved in. Very large crude carriers, dirty, uh, dirty tanker versus clean tanker, which is product, kerosene, diesel, etc. Both of them are going through the, the, the roof. Okay. So if I do a back of an envelope valuation for Saskos, here's what I'm looking at. Current price today is at 2273. Next year, I've broken this down on a per share basis. So next year, Analysts estimate this company can do $18.20 per share in EBITDA on an earnings per share basis, $14.60 earnings per share. And if we just use historic multiples, so this is me here over the last sort of decade or so, looking at um, the multiples that have been paid for the company, its mean valuations at around 3.5 times EBITDA and about twice the earnings. So if you just took that, you'd be looking at a, a weighted average. If you took, excuse me, an equally weighted average between those two, you'd be looking at a target price of maybe $46.45. So that's a double from where we are today. Our median estimate of the net asset value alone is about 60 bucks. So that's another, at least, you know, that would be a triple. This is giving me a lot more confidence to take the risk in what would be a, a, a risky company. What's this company done over the last uh, 
over the last few years. So if we look at the revenues, the revenues have gone up, the operating income has fluctuated and but it has gone up. And if you look at this, if you look at the yellow line here, that gives an indication of the change year on year for its operating income. And this is the case with cyclical companies. Like it has these massive swings up, then it has a bad year and there's a massive swing up. Given the way the order book looks for shipping, I think you're really heading into the sweet spot for a bull market. So the rates these things can charge, if you look at the the small little pink line in the negatives from, uh, from 2021, and then it went shot up into 2022, I think that it can continue to shoot up for a few years and then it'll be terrible once the order book comes online. They'll flood the market with ships and they won't be able to charge the same prices. Um, so that's that's the risk in the long term. If you look at the shipyards, that's not going to happen until 2026 at the earliest. The risks. It's a highly levered company. It's got a lot of debt. It's a Greek company, which means you never know when they're going to hit you with dilution. No reversion to net asset valuation. So what if I'm wrong? What if it doesn't simply revert to one times net asset value? It has traded at a discount to its net asset value for, for quite some time. So you've got to take that into consideration. It's risky as an individual play, but I'm so bullish on the entire sector outlook that this is good enough to warrant a small position that will give me outsized returns if I'm right on the overall thesis. So this is like a levered oil company or a levered gold miner in a bull market for gold or oil, et cetera. They outperform because all of a sudden the percentage change to the bottom line of their free cash flows goes through the roof. That's the type of play that I'm thinking about here with Saskos. This <laughs> this is ugly. So this is the amount of shares outstanding uh, since twenty where are we twenty twenty four? They're basically well, they they're more than doubled. And so this happens with these types of companies. You've got to be really careful because when the price runs up, they often just uh, sell more shares to the open market, and then normally the Greek companies buy more ships or pay themselves or do God knows what. It's really, really, uh, it's a whole nother world. So you've got to be careful. Um, just thought I'd point it out there. This is not a, this is not a layup by any means. Another way of looking at the dilution. Okay. So I I'm sure you get the, I'm sure you get the picture there. I won't harp on it other than to say, if you look back over the last decade or so, this is what happens uh, every now and then they just go through like 40% dilution year on year and, it goes up again. So this is generally not what you want to see in a long-term investment. This is not something I would consider a long-term investment. It's a speculation, short-term cyclical. So you've been warned. Share price has been all over the place given the volatility and not too much to, to talk about there. Given recent events sort of since October and the lag effect, the thing is, uh, is trading up again. Verdict is simple. It's at a steep discount. It's at a massive free cash flow yield. The difference is I think the shipping rates will be the catalyst for the next year. Okay, so it's getting 1% of my assets under management for the eToro portfolio, but I'll be keeping a, a hawkish eye on this. And if something, if I see something I don't like or something goes wrong, I'm just going to cut it. Uh, and that's that because I have questions about the management. Hopefully you enjoy that. I uh, hope you had a great 2023. Hope 2024 is even better. And I look forward to catching up with you in another video then. Take care.